أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاطم النبيين حبيب قلوبنا وشفيع نفوسنا سيدنا ومولانا محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الحمد لله الذي جعلنا من المتمسكين بولاية سيدنا مولانا أمير المؤمنين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل الأكتة من لساني يفكه قولي أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في كتاب المبين واستعينوا بالصبر والسلاة وإنما لكبيرة إلا على الخاشعين صدق الله العلي العظيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد My respected elders, my dear youth my brothers and sisters in Islam, and all those who are viewing. Assalamu alaikum jameean wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I pray that these days in the holy month of Ramadan are continuously filled with joy, filled with happiness, and filled with reflection, inshaAllah. And it is always a reminder that this is the month to get closer to the holy book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get close to Qur'an so it is always important for us to make time for the Qur'an to get closer to the Qur'an there is no doubt that there is a lot of thawab there is a lot of blessings and rewards to be gained from finishing the Qur'an and doing a khatam of the Qur'an um, a lot of us are very focused on that in this holy month as well and there is no doubt that there is such a big reward for that as well. But it is also important for us to get closer to the Qur'an through understanding the Qur'an. Whether that be through attending virtual lectures regarding a specific tafsir of a surah or maybe it might be getting close to the Qur'an by understanding the language of the Qur'an which is Arabic. And there is no doubt that in order to understand something, you need to understand the language it is written in. And also, Arabic is not a easy language to learn. So, inshallah, in this month, we are making continuous efforts to get closer to the Holy Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in various forms, inshallah. Rasara salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Tonight being the third night of the holy month of Ramadan, we are continuing with the subject, the topic that we have chosen. Why is it, why is it important for the youth to fast, especially living in the West? And for those who have been following and for those who are joining to this um, discussion, we discussed in the previous two sessions that before we even start to discuss why it's important to fast as youth, we need to understand that every action has a base. And in the first session, we said that the base for fasting in the true sense of fasting is having an intention, having a niya, right? And we said that having a purified and having a sincere niya will lead, will allow us to achieve that action or that goal through sincerity and through purity as well and thus if we relate that back to fasting having a sincere and pure niya for fasting will will allow you to have a sincere and pure fasting experience as well right because that base will essentially manifest with what's to come next right and then we also said that from the intention um we see that it leads to the growth and success in our actions only when we are implementing this characteristic of self-discipline. 
Because yes, you can have an intention, but if that intention does not is not carried out by any action planning, your actions or your goals will not be um, achieved, right? It's just like saying that, okay, today I want to get this done, that done, and that done. But how can I get all those things done if I'm not going to get out of bed, right? So I need that action planning. I need that self-discipline that if I need to get all these things done, then I need to get to bed the night before at a specific time, right? So it's always important for us to note that we need to have that intention. After that intention, right? After that intention, which is pure and sincere and, you know, filled with depth and reflection, only then we can, only then can we achieve um, our goals. Only then can we achieve um, this whole process of action planning and to reach what we actually want to. And we saw that with self-discipline, um, it is not that we are just focused on self-discipline because as you'll see throughout these uh, sessions that all of these characteristics um, are connected with each other in some sort of way. Um, self-discipline, for example, as we said yesterday, self-discipline will bring something called patience within someone. And we said patience is a very big pinnacle of our Iman. And then with patience, we will also see consistency, right? And we brought up that example of working out, right? We said that if you have that self-discipline, right, you're going to know that it needs to be carried out with consistency, right? And once you have that consistency, you'll be patient, right? It, just like that example of working out, that when you work out and you have that self-discipline that you're going to work out X amount of days and you're going to have, you know, uh, an X diet, whatever it is, um, you're going to see you're going to have that consistency, right? Um, you're going to follow out. You're going to follow through with your action plan, right? And then from there, you're going to see that you're going to have patience, Right. Because when you when you start working out, it's not that you're going to be working out and you're like, OK, after a week, I'm going to bulk up or I'm going to achieve that goal that I wanted to to working out only in a week. No, that's not how it is. You know that because you have that patience through your consistency, you're going to see that it's going to take a while to reach your results. But if it's fil if that whole process is filled with dedication, that self dedicate that self discipline and that consistency in that patience, Right. It might take a while, but you're going to reach your goal no matter what. And you're going to be successful in that um, in, you know, any any path of life, inshallah. Recite a salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. The next characteristic trait that we want to be focusing on that will help a youth to better understand why it's important for them to fast and the implications of fasting is that character. Uh, that character trait of perseverance, right? Um, we hear it a lot, um, especially in motivational speeches that have perseverance, or we hear it from our school teachers, or, you know, we have a meeting at work and things are getting tough at work. It's like, okay, team, we need to have perseverance and we're going to reach this goal. What does that actually mean? And how is fasting going to help you as a youth and beyond the age of um, being a youth as well? So perseverance is basically that continuous effort to achieve something despite the difficulties. Now, a lot of people might confuse this with patience, but patience and perseverance are two different things. Um, are they complete polar opposite things? No, because as we said, all these character uh, character traits um, are connected with one, one another in um, you know a very in-depth and specific way as well, which we're going to touch on as well, All right? So perseverance is what? It's that continuous effort to achieve something despite the difficulties. And an example of that is if you want to dig for a treasure, for an example, right? I'm not saying that it's a practical example, but it's something to give you that imagery of what we're trying to talk about. If you're trying to dig for a treasure, you know that a treasure, right? Let's say it's a chest filled with you know, gold and silver coins and whatever it is, you know that it's going to be dug down really deep within the earth, right? And in order to do that, you need the appropriate tools, right? You need, for an example, a shovel or shovel or, um, or whatever it is. Um, and you know that you have to put in that effort and you have to put in that consistency and you have to put in that work in order to find that treasure, right? 
So you can't expect to be shoveling, on, you know, shoveling the dirt for five minutes and expect yourself to find um, that treasure, right? Those five minutes might be tiring for you as well. And you might be like, it's been five, ten minutes. I'm so exhausted. Uh, the sun is scorching and I'm not able to reach this treasure. So you know what? I'm just going to quit. Versus when you actually know what your goal is and you know how to get to your goal, you're going to be consistently working towards that. So if you know that the the treasure is dug down really deep and you need to put in more hours into that, you need to put in more effort. Or maybe instead of doing it yourself, you need the help of others. Um, you're going to be digging for hours. Right, you're gonna actually have an organized action plan in order for you to better understand how to reach that goal, or in this example, reach that treasure. So I believe that through this example, that's basically what perseverance is. Right? Perseverance is not that okay, I have an I have a hardship and I'm gonna battle through that hardship and I'm gonna persevere, but only for a limited amount of days or a limited amount of hours, uh, because I'm not patient, but I was persevering. Essentially, that's not persevering, right? Because perseverance, as we said, requires you to actually have an action plan with that. It requires you to reflect, right? Day in and day out. Because yet again, a part of perseverance is having patience, right? Knowing that a lot of your goals won't be achieved in a day or it won't be achieved in a week or a month. It might even take longer or it might even, you know, uh, not take that long. But that's really up to the goal that you're trying to achieve. رسالة صلوات الله محمد وعلى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد. Why is this trade important? Um, this trade is essentially important because it was a trait that was possessed by the best of creations to be created by Allah سبحانه وتعالى who are the masumin عليهم الصلاة والسلام. And we see this through, you know, every one of our Imams, we see this to the Prophet, and you know, I think the pinnacle of perseverance is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam himself. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And we see this at the beginning of the rise of Islam when the Prophet got the revelation, and you know, after he got that revelation, he was commanded to what? Preach the message of Islam within Mecca, right? And obviously, you had people there that were not Muslim. You had. Um, people who were polytheists, right? Or they were pagans, right? And the Prophet had to deal with a lot of hardships during that time. And we see that we see that through through this whole period of um, the spread of Islam uh, by the Prophet along with a certain amount of companions as well. Um, we see that, for an example, when the Prophet was preaching the noble message of Islam in cities such as Ta'if, you know, one of the biggest examples that we heard, the kids of Ta'if would actually chase away the Prophet, you know, the blessed Prophet by throwing stones at him, right? At that time, they didn't, did they even know who that was, right? Did they know that that was, that was the messenger of Allah, right? And the Prophet didn't come out with anger. The Prophet didn't, um, you know, say we need revenge on these people because they're throwing stones at me. Or, you know, there's incidents where people were actually throwing garbage um, on the blessed body of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. But what did the Prophet do throughout, throughout all of these hardships, throughout facing all of these tests and trials that were given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Did the Prophet give up? Na'udhu billah. No, he didn't. Right? Because if he did, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't be here as Muslims. The reason why we are here as, inshallah, firm Muslims believing in the message of Islam is because of the perseverance of the Prophet ﷺ. If it wasn't up to his perseverance, Islam wouldn't have got this far, right? It is because he had that intention that this is for, you know, qurbatan ilallah. I'm doing this for the sake of Allah. This is what Allah has commanded me to do. And this is what is going to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, but yet again, it's very important to see how this, what, guides this perseverance right because perseverance just does not come out of you know thin air it comes from a root cause it comes from that base that we were talking about earlier on the intention the niyyah if the niyyah is going to be pure and sincere then what the action that is carried out from that is also going to be pure and sincere right if it's filled with depth if that intention in, is intended to be you know 
geared towards that is hardworking, that action, that action planning is going to be filled with a process of you being hardworking as well. So the Prophet had hardships, but he persevered, right? And throughout this, he asked for the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also guided those people who were part of the companions of the Prophet to help him out as well, right? So as we mentioned before, perseverance is not a one-man game. It does not mean for you to, you know... Uh, believe that you know i i need to be strong you know completely by myself um i'm alone in this and i'm just going to get through no that's not how it necessarily works perseverance also requires for you to ask for the assistance and help of others as well and another example of this as well that i'm sure a lot of you have already taken a guess at is none other than imam hussein alayhi salatu wassalam right the tragedy that um was upon Imam Hussein alayhi salam and his family is a tragedy that the world has never that the world will never see um you know something like that again right the tragedy of Karbala right although is it it is a tragedy right it is a musiba what happened upon the al of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wasallam upon the children and the family of Imam Hussein alayhi salam what did what made this tragedy so special right when we talk about the sacrificing of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, was it just sacrifice just for the sake of sacrificing? No. Through that sacrificing, there was perseverance. Imam Hussein alayhi salam had that intention and uh, he had that base of what? Qurbatan ilallah. I'm doing all of this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I'm sacrificing my sons, when I'm sacrificing my Aliun al Akbar, my Ali Askar. Um, when I'm sacrificing my brother Abbas, when I'm, you know, sacrificing my beloved companions like Habib ibn Madahir, like Zuhair ibn Qayn, it's not just for the sake of sacrificing, right? It's for the sake of perseverance because Imam Hussein alayhi salam knows that this is all for the sake of Allah. So any hardships that came upon Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he knew that he has to make that continuous effort for his end goal. And that end goal is none other than what? Pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Um, and showing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that throughout all these hardships, um, it is only Allah, the one that who is remembered. Recite a salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali. And we also see perseverance, you know, from people who are not ma'asum, right? We see them from our ulama. And you know, one story that comes into my mind that I heard often is that of a very noble scholar by the name of Alama Taba Tabai, Rahmatullah Ali, who, as many of, uh, many of you might know, is the author of the famous Tafsir of the Quran, Tafsir al Mizan. Um, during the time of Alama Taba Tabai, uh, being a scholar is not easy, right? Um, because when you're focused on your goals of becoming a scholar, the worldly things do not matter to you as much. Um, and so at those times, um, when Alama Taba Taba'i had his family, um, you know, and they were living in the city of Qom, there came upon, uh, there came a time upon Alama Taba Taba Taba'i where, you know, they were going through financial struggles. And, um, what happened in the story is someone came to Alama Taba Tabai's house and they were his guest. And Alama Taba Tabai noticed that he did not even have a tea bag, you know, to make tea to serve to his guest. That's how hard the financial struggles for him and his family were. So what did Alama Taba Tabai do? Did Alama Taba Tabai, yes, he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no doubt. Right? He did his a'mal, he made his supplications, he talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help him through all this. But that can only, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can only help you if you start to help yourself first, right? So, Alama Taba Taba did not just stop over there, right? He knew he had to carry out his goal, he had to carry out his scholarship. He wanted to, you know, complete the work that he was, that was already in progress, which at that time was Tafsir al-Mizan. So what did he do? Alama Taba Taba at that time owned a farm. Right, uh, somewhere in the outskirts of um, 
you know, some cities in Iran, which is uh, the cities I'm not recalling their names right now. But he went to those farms and he did labor himself. Someone like Allah Taba Tabai, you know, someone who is a world renowned scholar right now, right? Even though he has passed away, his works are still remembered. Someone at that rank going and doing physical labor in order to make money, right? And Alhamdulillah, he was successful in this. He was able to, you know, get through those financial hardships and come back to his scholarship. But what was that thing that, you know, helped him through this? All right. It was his perseverance that no matter how hard things got, he made that continuous effort because number one, he had his intention. He had that base. And number two, from there, he was able to do his action planning. Right. And from and. Right, that was guided by his passion as well, which was what his scholarship to get closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and to provide us with, you know, such knowledge and such extant um, works that he has provided us with. So when he had all these things in mind, what is the thing? What is the quality that he possessed? It was none other than perseverance, right? Um, and it's something that all of us can learn for, from, right? No doubt that he's a rank. He is a scholar at such a big rank, but he's not masum. We're not masum. We can do it as well, right? All of us are able to um, develop this character trait of perseverance. And it's, yet again, it's not going to happen in one day. It's not going to happen in a week or a month, right? Depending on the person is very subjective at that time as well. But it's something that if we're able to, you know, work on our intention, work on our habits, work on our self-discipline, work on our patience, we're able to, you know, develop this character trait of perseverance inshallah recite a salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad so throughout this session we said that why is it important for us as youth to fast because if we fast right we know that we're going to be hungry we're going to be thirsty right um or there are certain sins that we might have been committing every day, but in Ramadan we don't, and it's a struggle, right? And in Ramadan we know that we have the intention to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to work on ourselves, and therefore we start to naturally develop this character trait of perseverance, right? That throughout this month, and you know, even after this month, that inshallah I'm not going to do this thing, that inshallah I'm going to work towards this, or inshallah I'm going to work towards that. Right. That can only come when you start to develop perseverance. Right. And just sit down at the end of the night. Reflect. Right. Don't be too harsh on yourself. Right. If you're not able to achieve that one thing that you wanted to in the month of Ramadan in one night, don't worry about it. We're humans. Right. We can't achieve a million things, you know, in the span of one day. That's not how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala subhanahu ta created us. He created us this way because he wants he wants us to persevere. Right. So always be optimistic about these things. But it's always important for us to reflect that. How can I develop this trait of perseverance? Right. And you'll see that it'll go a long way. Right. When you get older in the future, inshallah, you're going to see that whether it's in the workplace or whatever field or whatever you want to do in life, you're going to see that perseverance is going to go a long way. Right. And through that, you're going to be able to help other people. And, you know, that is one of the maqsa, the, the, the goal of being a human, which is what? Helping others in need, inshallah. And that can only be done when you're working on yourself. Inshallah, I hope everyone who is listening has benefited. And in the next few nights, we're going to be continuing on this topic and inshallah going in depth and talking about more character traits that we can develop through fasting as youth and how they will carry out in the future as well. وَصَلَّ عَلَى سَيْدِنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى آلِ بَيْتِهِ الطَّيِّبِينَ الطَّاهِرِينَ اللَّهُمْ صَلِّ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ وَآلِ مُحَمَّدْ